What's up everybody? My name is Casper Nagel and today we'll check out the 5.5 inch monitor from Andy Sini called C5. And Disney did send this monitor for me for free, but I'm not being paid to say anything special and this is my own opinion about this monitor. The C5 is a 5.5 inch monitor with a weight of 217 grams with the crazy 3000 nits. And this is special. This is a very bright monitor and it's perfectly for working in daylight. It's coming up at 309 euros on Amazon. And let's unbox this monitor. First off, you have some manual informations, different things in here. And inside you'll get a very nice case. It's nice that a manufacturer actually delivers a case with their equipment because filmmakers travel a lot and all the equipment will be traveled almost all the time if you're not only a YouTuber. Inside the case you will get a USB-C cable. You will also get a HDMI to HDMI micro. Additionally, you will get in this kit a NPF, Sony NPF style battery 550. So that's the standard small size. But with this one, it's Andy Cine's own. It's really great that uh, there is a but small button down here. So when you press it, you will actually get the uh, battery level indicator. So you can see how much power there is left in this battery. And that is actually a really good feature in a battery because uh, we all know these batteries. Another thing you get is an included monitor mount. And I think this is much better than the bigger ones they normally send, which, which is an L-shaped um, monitor mount. I think this is much better because this is what I use on all my cameras anyway. So here we have the monitor itself. If we take a look at the monitor itself, uh, we have the, of course, uh, the front here. On the top, you have the power button. Um, also to, I believe it's uh, to change the touch on the monitor. We have the light meter indicator, so it will automatically dim uh, the screen. We have the menu button right here. It's a dial to uh, create the settings. Quarter inch thread on the side. SD card for LUTs and so on. We have the uh, quarter inch thread on the bottom. Then we have a DC 12 volt input and a DC 8 volt output. So you can, uh, you can actually power your camera if you have a dummy battery for your camera with this output. On the other side, we have HDMI in and HDMI out and a headphone jack. On the back, this is where the interesting things are happening. Uh, we have the, of course, for the battery, but over here we have another slot. And I'll get back to that later. <laughs> okay, let's first take this money surmount, add it. And the great thing they included an Allen key also. Uh, and in the, one of the ends, it's actually used to put into one of these holes we have right here. And then you can tighten the monitor mount completely to the monitor so it will not fall off. That's a really good thing. When we are looking at the monitor, the monitor is pretty thick in itself. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest monitors that I have. Maybe it's the same size as my C7, which uh, is a previous version of this one. Um, it's a bigger monitor because there is a lot more 
into it, but um, I think it's pretty thick, but I think it's it's okay. Um, and finally, finally, I got a monitor that can handle my wireless video systems. And this is what what's all about with this uh, this backside of the monitor. This is actually for mounting your wireless video system on the back to the unit. I have the one from Shimble, the S600, 600S. So you can simply like that. And now you have one unit. Everything is combined, which is really, really nice. It's really easy to hand over this unit to a director or a, a client or just use it in your YouTube studio. I use this one, for example, to my uh, to an overhead rig. This is really easy to just monitor the signal and what I'm seeing without having a bunch of cables and bunch of connections and everything. I can just take a stand right here, small mount here, add the monitor and everything is connected. This is really neat and really nice and I really love this setup. So thank you Andy Cine for finally making a monitor that has this connection unit. Really great. So next thing is to connect. I only have a pretty big, pretty big um, cable here. All the rest is in use. If you want to, on the back here, you can remove the sticker and then you can, there are two screws in the back here, as you also can see on the back here. So you can position this one differently if you need to move it to the side or if you, maybe you can rotate it and, oh, I don't think you can rotate it because of the cables, but you can uh, you can move the position a bit if, if that is needed for your equipment. So next, you can take your battery, attach it to the back. Also, the battery has a USB-C charging input, so you don't need a Sony NPF style battery charger. You can simply charge it directly. That's also a nice thing. So when you have plugged in the battery, the battery will actually power both the monitor and your wireless systems because there is a connection input. That is really neat. So again, you only have one unit, it's really cool. Because this monitor is 3000 nits and really works good in the hot sunlight, it also needs to be cooled down. So therefore there is a built-in fan in here that turns on and when it turns on, it's pretty loud. Um, actually, really loud. And this is actually the biggest con for me from this monitor. Um, I would not use it indoor, when the when the fan is on, I will mainly be using it um, outside for a client. That will be perfect. Um, or I will also I have also turned it on, turned it off the fan when I have used it as a monitor in here. But the monitor will get pretty hot. Maybe it will also be fine if you don't have a mic just next to this monitor. So on top of my camera and a mic next to it will not work, but but if you don't have a microphone uh, directly, but you have, let's say, lavalier microphones or wireless microphones, uh, I think it will be just fine using uh, as a uh, monitor on top of your camera. But let's power on this monitor here. So now you can hear the, the fan is kicking in. Yeah, so you can hear it's it's pretty loud. You just switch on the wireless video system. So now you can see the shimble is connecting. It the shimble takes a little while to to uh, start, but it it's really low consumption, so you can just have it powered on all the time. A view of what my camera sees, what you are seeing right now. So it's connected directly. So this is really nice to just have an a monitor um, for a client, uh, everything is packed together, everything is one battery only uh, without having a, or getting a, a bigger 
Uh, V-mount battery, you can simply just use these Sony NPF style batteries. The picture quality is really beautiful. It's really, it's really beautiful and it's really crispy and it's really clear. But this monitor is not just only this setup that is really nice. It is packed with a ton of settings. And I will go through that now so you can see the different things that it has. So let's run over the settings real quick. You can see I have the wireless signal right here. So when you can use the, the menu up here, click it to enter this menu. Or you can simply tap two times over here. So let's go up to the top. We have the, the waves up here. So in the analytics, there are different Lots of different uh, analytics you can use. So right now it's uh, it's turned on. Everything is uh, turned on. You have the wave. Vector scope. Histogram. Auto metering. Quite a lot of uh, different features up here. Next is the assist tab. Right here you have the focus assist, so you can help to pull focus. You can see it's marked over here. You can change the intensity and so on. And the color, you have the zebras, like that. And you can also change the intensity of that. Check fields. I think it's something, I'm not sure what that is. We have the false color. Airy and Spectrum, two different ones. We have the HDR. It's a 709, I think it's a lot. We have the lot, different lots. You can uh, also import your different lots. Then you also have the next thing, which is the marker. So you have the, all of the, those normal lines. We have the cine guides, save areas, crosshair, let's move that. Under the image, we have scan mode. Under an overscan, I've never found out what that really is. The aspect ratio you can change. You can change if you'd like to zoom on the monitor. Anamorphic, pixel to pixel flip, and uh, yeah, also uh, flip the image, and so on. Next, we have the colors. First, you have the brightness. Don't change that, don't, don't turn any settings on that. If you want to make the monitor brighter, you need to use the backlight because that is actually the, the backlight of the monitor. And now you can hear the fan is also kicking in again. And we have the contrast, saturation, sharpness, hue, color temperature. Next. The systems, you can uh, have a user group, so you can attach, uh, add some different things here. We have the volume uh, to the headphones, I believe. You can change that over here also by up and down. The fan noise, or fan speed, we have the language, menu. In here, you do the firmware upgrade. It takes only a couple of minutes. Plug in the SD card where you put in the file. Hit update, that's it. And then you have some tips here. Then you also have down here in the bottom, you have all the settings here. 
Before you really start using this monitor, please update the firmware because I was not able to use my monitor because the firmware is too low. So when I plugged in an HDMI cable from my camera to the monitor, I didn't get any signal at all. Um, nothing was able to uh, appear. When I added another monitor and, and had the output from that monitor to this monitor, I got a signal. But directly input it was not possible at all to get any signal. I found that, that the firmware needed to be updated to 0 0.4. So I did that and the monitor have, has worked uh, without any issues uh, since then. So please follow the instructions. You can find the information uh, on YouTube. I will also maybe make a video on how to update, but also you can find it at the back of the manual uh, in here. The firmware is a little tricky to find. You can uh, write to um, it's cs at andycini.com. So please do that for the latest firmware. Let's also talk about some cons because there is some with this uh, monitor and 100% uh, the biggest con is the fan noise. I think it's really loud and it's really hard to turn down <coughs> <clears throat> it's really hard to turn down the fan noise and I think it can be locked uh, so you're not able to turn it uh, further down when the monitor is too bright and that's probably a safety precaution uh, but that, that really limits uh, it to not having a close to a microphone like I have right now uh, you will picking up, be picking up uh, the sound uh, from that I would say even at the low fan setting, I will say that there is generates quite a lot of noise. And let's just check what's uh, what we have at the moment. So this is the fan shut completely off. Now nothing is there, but uh, let's hear when I put it up to one hundred percent. So this is one hundred percent. It's pretty noisy. Let's put it down to 50% and see there's not that much change. This is 50%. 16%. I think it's pretty loud still. 16%. 50%. 16%. Every time I touch the monitor, for example, with the brightness, right now the fan is off, but if I dial up the brightness, the, the fan will start again automatically. I cannot switch that off, but as you can see, the, the monitor will get pretty bright yeah, and it's easy to, to just change with, the, with the, the touch screen here, just simply in the left side, up and down, and on the other side, it's the volume. You can change that in the menu. Another con I have is that they always include HDMI micro only. And I'm not be using that for more than one camera. And I think they should just include real H HDMI cables. That's much better. I also have some suggestions to the manufacturer of this monitor, which can be solved in, I think, in firmware updates. When a setting is changed, it should not be reset automatically. And then when powering off, uh, it will reset. Especially what I'm thinking about is the auto brightness and the fan speed. When you power off, everything will get back to the factory settings. And I don't like that. Another thing to update is the fan setting. You should have a maybe a manual and an auto setting. So uh, if it's lowered by the user, it should stay at that setting when you're changing the brightness of the monitor. Because at the moment the fan kicks in, the monitor and, and its brightness changes and overrules everything in the fan settings. And that's an issue, but probably also a safety precaution. I like that the bigger kit has a version that includes the monitor mount and also the NPF style battery with the built-in level indicator, which is pretty, pretty nice. I'm only missing this standard uh, HDMI cable. All in all, I think this is a very good monitor and it's very solid build, it's beautiful picture, but 
If you are critical about fan noises in your room, this might not be the monitor for you. Thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the future.